India were dominant in Dominica. Can West Indies find a port of call in Port of Spain? The second test starts on Thursday. Deep Das Gupta joins us on ESPN Cricket for Match Day to set that up. Deep, thank you as always for your time. Uh, there wasn't much of a contest. The series, you could argue, has not really kicked off because West Indies didn't really show up. But they've had that extra time to prepare. Uh, their batting was obviously the biggest difference in that game in terms of how their batters didn't show up. What could they change in terms of personnel and more importantly, mindset and approach as they look to put more of a fight against the Indian bowlers? Right. I mean, an awesome way to start, uh, I guess, Yash, uh, the way you put uh, the whole thing in perspective. Uh, but having said that, yes, their biggest challenge uh, obviously was their batting. Uh, that was extremely disappointing, both the innings. Uh, keep in mind, there are quite a few guys, uh, quite a few players who would be available. Uh, most of them batters, like, uh, you know, Mayers would be available, Roston Chase would be available. So, it's a fair bit of uh, uh, not only talent, but experience which would be available as far as West Indies batting is concerned. Uh, McKenzie, I've heard a lot of good things about that, uh, this youngster. What only, I think, 21 years old. Uh, I think he might get a look in. Because that's the area where I think West Indies uh, seem to be struggling a little more. Uh, so, I think they would be better equipped in this test match. And also, the fact that uh, it's going to be played on a on a surface or at a venue, which is uh, historically one of the best uh, uh, places to play test match cricket in the world. It has a lot of history. It's an iconic venue, uh, the Port of Spain. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you can expect the pitch to be a lot truer as well. as uh, and, and also... Uh, West Indies would have a lot better playing 11, it seems, with all these players available. Yes, and many a great Indian batter has had a good time at Port of Spain uh, when you steeped in Indian cricket history too. Uh, so, considering that and, and the conditions on offer in Dominica, it wasn't just obviously West Indies didn't score runs, but even India, they had, it's not too often that you see India scoring 400 runs but needing 150 plus overs for it. Uh, yeah. Now, with what appears to be likely to be a more comfortable pitch, a, a faster pitch. Do you think the Indian batters too are likely to have an even better time? The likes of Gill and Rahane, who didn't quite cash in in Dominica, they would be licking their lips now? Absolutely, yes. And as you've mentioned before, I mean, traditionally, Port of Spain uh, has been a good track to bat on. You've seen a lot of big scores being scored, whether it's from a team perspective or individual perspective. So, it'll be a lot better uh, surface to bat on for sure. Uh, anything would be better than the last surface that we, we've seen as far as <clears throat> batting is concerned. Uh, and and it, it would be a good opportunity for uh, all those uh, batters, whether it's West Indian or Indian. Uh, because the most important part is, is if, if the pitch is true, uh, as a batter, you enjoy batting as well. You can play a lot more shots. You don't have to struggle as much. We've seen uh, in, the, in, in the last Test match, uh, a great opportunity for, uh, uh, for the batters uh, this Test match. But I guess the one area where a livelier pitch makes the contest so much more appealing is the fact that it brings, much neededly, the West Indian pacers into play. It's something we discussed a lot through the first test. It's something Ian Bishop has spoken about in his conversation with Ronak Kapoor after that first test. And uh, you'd imagine that that gives West Indies the likeliest ch uh, chance to challenge India, a surface that has something in it for their pacers to come into, come into play as well. Uh, that is there, but the interesting part is they've uh, included Sinclair, who's a spinner, into the side as well. I mean, I don't know if we should read anything into it uh, at all. So, uh, that, that might give you a hint what you can expect. But if there is anything, if, if Port of Spain surfaces anything that we've seen in the past, there would be something for the quicker bowlers as well. That's absolutely no two ways about it. And, uh, and if, if there is anything, which we expect it to be, uh, that definitely would kind of help the West Indian seamers as well. And with Roston Chase available, and if he plays, so you don't really have to look at any other spinner because he straight away comes in. He's a really quality all-rounder. And uh, that gives the opportunity for West Indies to play four seamers, uh, which they didn't in the last game. So, you'd prefer to see that? Assuming we get anything close to uh, an OK surface, you'd prefer to see West Indies go in with four seamers and remove at least one of Warakan or uh, Convo? Uh, I, I would like to believe that. Uh, and, and I would like to see that as well because uh, uh, their strength is their four uh, quick bowlers. Uh, they've been in good form, good nick. Whatever success they've got in this format in the last uh, year or so has been on the back of uh, good performances from their quick bowlers. 
So uh, yeah, I, I would expect them to play all four of them. And like I said, I mean, Rostin Chase coming back, and if he plays, uh, that gives them uh, that extra uh, a bowler and gives them the luxury to play an extra seamer. Actually, on the Indian bowling front, uh, the Pacers didn't have much to do thanks to uh, Messrs Ashwin and Jadeja. Uh, Unat cut bowled nine overs in the game. Shardul Thakur seven. Uh, would you would you consider? The option of that higher pace bowler in a Navdeep Saini or a Mukesh Kumar, or is it harsh to remove these two given how little of a chance they got in the first game? It would be harsh, isn't it? And that's the challenge of playing a two test match series because it's just uh, unfair to uh, not give an opportunity. I mean, just just play somebody for one test match and that's it. And, and especially when you didn't have much to do in that test match. So, uh, I honestly don't see too many changes as far as Indian playing 11 is concerned. Uh, I, I, I see the same playing 11 because I think that's a very uh, balanced playing 11 we saw. We had enough spinners, we had enough all-rounders, uh, we had team bowlers as well. So, I, I don't see any reason why India would need or think of changing the playing 11. 